this is Summer Art Academy at the Knoxville Museum of Art. My name is Miss Hannah and I will be teaching Don't Throw That Out, part four for seven through nine year olds. Welcome back artists. Today we will learn about artists Joseph Cornell and Robert Rauschenberg, transform a box into a display case for three dimensional collage, define, assemblage, combine, and aesthetic. Are you ready? Joseph Cornell was born in 1903 in New York State. In the 1930s, he was introduced to the idea that art was more than just paint on canvas, but that real objects could be incorporated into the artworks as well. So he began exploring the art of collage, just like us. Eventually, his collages evolved into collections of related objects he displayed in shadow boxes, which were deep frames for displaying keepsakes. Some artists begin with an idea, but often for Cornell, he began with acquiring the materials and would let the materials lead him to how they should be assembled. My favorite quote, my boxes are life's experiences aesthetically expressed. For this project, you're going to need a box and it doesn't matter the size of the box or what kind of box. I'm choosing a fairly shallow box that has a lid that lifts up and down. You could choose a shoe box um, that's empty or even just a normal box with flaps. But whatever size box you choose, is gonna determine what you're able to put in it. So your first step is finding a box you can use. Make sure you have an adult's permission. And you're also going to need a variety of collage materials. So that could be your fabric, paper, aluminum foil, anything that you've collected around the house. So for my box, I have chosen a box that has an attached lid. Some of you may have no lid. Some, may, some of you may have a lid that comes on and off like a shoe box. Um, but because mine does have a lid and it's attached, I have to make a decision pretty quickly about what to do with this lid. And I could either choose to cut out a window, I could leave it as is, or I can even cut some designs out. And so I'm going to go through with you how to safely do that if you do have a lid you want to transform. We do need to do that first with these attached boxes um, because that's gonna be safest for not only you, um, but also for the art you're gonna be creating inside the box. And so what I'm gonna do is a quick design. I'm gonna make a small window. So I'm folding a piece of paper to the size of the window I want. And then you can use a pencil or a marker and trace the inside part of your box. And this is why I'm doing it first on my box with a connected lid. Um, part of that is because it is a flat surface. And whenever you're cutting, especially using an X-Acto knife, you wanna make sure you're using a flat surface. Underneath my lid, I have another piece of cardboard to protect my tabletop. And because my table, my cardboard was um, flapping up, I used some painter's tape to hold it down. But if you have a flat surface already, you're ready to go. And then I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife to cut out the space. The goal is not to cut it in one go. It may take multiple times, but I'm gonna very carefully Follow the line, always making sure my other hand is away from my blade. So if I do happen to slip, it doesn't come to my hand. And you'll see me move my hand every time I make a cut. And just take your time. When using an X-Acto blade, you always wanna have an adult's permission and maybe even their supervision. That's gonna be up to the rules in your home. And after you make several cuts in cardboard, the X-Acto knives do tend to twist, so just make sure they're tight because you don't want your blade to come out. And again, I'm taking my time, cutting very slowly, keeping my other hand away, and I also have my body a good distance from my cuts.
Once I have my first round done, I'm gonna check to see if I can pop that out. And if I can't, I'm just gonna go back over the cuts I just made. And I might wanna do that a couple of times. Again, check the tightness of your blade, especially when you're cutting these harder to cut items. The blades do tend to rotate out. And see how that is able to just pop out of there with a couple of applications. Again, the goal is not to cut it out in one go, it's to cut it out safely. And just because you, you might have found your first couple of cuts easy, if you get to one that's difficult, don't be afraid to ask adults help. It's always better to be safe when using these blades. All right. So I've now cut out a window. I'm also going to show you how, how to cut out a quick design. And while I'm thinking about it, we're working on the inside of the box because when I close the box, I don't see any mistake drawing lines I made. So I'm just gonna cut out a quick design on each side of the window. When I'm doing my designs, I'm thinking wider um, less detail on these um, because it is a thicker material. So you don't want to draw anything too detailed. And again, I'm just taking my time, making sure the blade never gets too close to my body, and also keeping my hand away from the blade. You don't have to make any changes. If you do have a lid, you don't have to make any changes to it if you don't want to. This is completely optional, but it is a fun it is a fun way to get art onto different parts of your box. an example of that. go to the other side of the box and see how much got through. Like I can tell I missed that cut right there. I'm not going to cut through the box. I'm always going to flip it around to work on the flat surface. And now I have a lid design for my box. And since that's done, 
I'm now gonna work on the inside of my box. And for this, we're gonna be creating a collage, just like we've been doing as we've learned about different artists. Um, but this time, our collage is gonna be the background um, for our assemblage art. So we're gonna be creating a two-dimensional space. You can choose to cover every element or you can choose where you want to cover. I'm using a variety of materials. I wanna keep mine pretty neutral, but you can choose to use um, colored paper, um, pictures, anything that you want to. But remember, you want to change it. So even if you find an image you really like, you want to always make a change. If I'm just working with one or two pieces of paper, I'm gonna use my scissors to cut. But if I have a thick piece of paper or even my cereal boxes, I might choose to cut out with my X-Acto knife. And it's the same rules. Always make sure you're cutting away from your non-dominant hand. The X-Acto knife works great for large stacks of paper, but it's really better to use scissors if you're just doing one or two pieces of paper. So I'm just cutting out some pieces for my collage. This is from a cracker box and you can see scissors work great on this material. I could draw out some designs like I did on my box lid, or you can just free cut. Little scraps like that are great um, uses for texture. So whenever I'm using boxes like this to create collage, I actually challenge myself to use as much of the box as possible. So I will use just about every sizable scrap. And I'm just gonna lay these in there and start making a design. And once I have kind of an idea of what I want to do, I'll get out my glue. But remember, it's always better to lay out an idea before you start gluing because once it's glued down, you're either, you're gonna have to rethink your idea. And you can absolutely change your mind, but a lot of times that involves covering up your work rather than trying to peel it up. I really want this to be pretty neutral with just moments of color. You may choose to do something different. You might wanna use lots of different color. So what I'm gonna do here is just cut some design out of the piece of art I found. And just like I was saying earlier, when you have a piece of someone else's art in collage, you want to take it and transform it into something that's yours. Use their work as inspiration. Once I'm pretty comfortable with my idea, I'm going to start gluing. Because I'm gonna be building on top of this collage as this pro project goes on, I'm gonna use quite a bit of glue. I really want it to stick down. You can either grab a paintbrush or use your finger to even just spread some glue on the edges, on the tops of your images to help keep those flat.
And I'm just gonna layer this and layer this and layer this until I feel like it's done. For the background of my collage, you can you can use any materials you want to. One that you may not have used is aluminum foil. Aluminum foil is great because you can fold it and give it lots of different textures. And it also just adds like that element of shine. So that's a really easy kitchen material that you might have on hand that you might want to incorporate. If you're using um, used aluminum foil, it's totally fine, just make sure it's clean. Again, consult with your adult partners um, and if you need to wash it and let it completely dry before you use it, that's completely fine. But you can use it as a great collage tool right alongside your papers, cardboards, and fabrics. If you've glued something down and it starts coming up, just go back to it and hold it down, count to 10, sometimes even 20, and give it time to stick. If it continues doing it, you can add some more glue, and that's a great time to paint some glue on the top as well. This is an example of a completed collage. And now we're gonna talk about what we can do with the outside of the box. Especially if you're working with a box with a lid, you wanna make sure that your inside edges are completely dry before you close that lid. And you'll notice that I have created designs all over the edges and the back of this box. And you may recognize that whenever you're working with something wet, each side needs to dry completely before you work on the other side. So you have to choose a bottom. And so I have left the top of this box blank so that way you can see what I am doing. You could choose to just paint your box. You could add collage to it. You wanna think about, do you want your box to be able to open and close? And for me, the answer is yes, because we're not done working inside the box. But I wanna get this part done so if it does get a bit messy, it doesn't, affect what I'm going to put inside the box in part five. I have some black paint. You can use any type of paint you want to, any colors. Again, this is your artwork, but I'm choosing black because I want to keep my box pretty neutral right now. So I've used lots of browns, um, like an earthy green, black and white. It's just kind of calm and tranquil but your box may be communicating something else and that's completely fine. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my paintbrush and I am just painting my black dots. You could also put the paint on a plate and dip your dots into it. You can experiment with which technique you like best, but I'm really liking the painting. You could even pour some paint onto your dots. You can use these big ones or these little ones. You can even use um, plastic wrap to create fun textures. But I'm just gonna put the bubble wrap onto the box and press. And when I lift it, it makes a fun print. You don't have to paint it after every time. Press and lift. Press and lift. Once you start noticing your dots going away, if you don't like that, 
Just go ahead, add more paint, and start again. And notice I'm not taking a lot of time to put the paint on. I'm working pretty quickly. This paint doesn't dry instantly, but it does dry. And so the longer you wait, the less of a print you're going to get. So press. And lift. Now since I'm working on the top, I would wait the top to completely dry before I flipped it over to work on the bottom and vice versa. You always want to have a dry edge that you have your box sitting on, otherwise you're going to get it stuck to surfaces. You can also choose to go in and just add some paint places. Um, but again, beware that if you're using one of these boxes that opens and close or a box with a lid that you don't want to uh, glue it or paint it shut. You want it to be able to still work together. But if you're using a box that doesn't have a lid, um, you have a lot more freedom. Another thing to think about when you're using the boxes with the lids, I don't need to paint the parts that don't show. So that's one of the reasons I have this box closed. Um, there's still parts that, if I can find the lid, there we go. For example, these edges don't need painting because they're hidden from view. So I'm just gonna leave this box to dry and it will be ready for us to add some more ideas in part five. Robert Rauschenberg was born in Texas in 1925. Initially, he goes to college to become a pharmacist, but then he is drafted into the Navy in 1943. When he is discharged at 23, he goes to Black Mountain College in North Carolina to study art and eventually starts creating a type of art known as a combine or combine. Combines are a hybrid or combination of collage, painting, and sculpture using everyday materials in new ways. My favorite Robert Rauschenberg quote is, you begin with the possibilities of the material. And that's what we're gonna be doing here. Your next step to completing this project is to collect your materials. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna use but then you can look around your home, talk to the adults that you live with, find out what you have permission to use, and I want you to collect materials that you're gonna wanna put inside your shadow boxes. For me, that is going to be a can, dry markers, their lids, saran wrap, aluminum foil, and pipe cleaners. But other ideas could be a drink carrier or an egg carton, popsicle sticks, which can be used for multiple things, bottle caps, can tabs, anything that is clean that you might be throwing out is usable to create your art. I even have here an insert from a box that I might be able to use. So whatever inspires you, and what I want you to do is I want you to collect those materials, find them, and I want you to start sketching ideas. So use the sketchbooks that we created in part one and put in some of these ideas. What might you do with it? For me, I have this big idea of my can pouring something out. And so I'm gonna start with that idea and in part five, we're gonna to get together and we're gonna make those ideas come to life. Thank you for joining me for part four of Don't Throw That Out. Today, we learned about Joseph Cornell's shadow boxes and Robert Rauschenberg's combines. We transformed a box into a display case and began thinking about the objects we will be assembling in it. In our final class of Don't Throw That Out, we will learn different techniques for assembling our found object collages. Thank you for participating in Summer Art Academy at the Knoxville Museum of Art. See you next time.